Hi, I'm Jim Leonard. I'm also known uh, in the scene as a trickster. My name is Rowan Litkovitz. Online, I have been better known as Cthulhu of Mr. Green and Acid. Hi, my name is Vega Shevstad. I'm also known as Shady of the uh, demo scene group called the Crusaders. Hi, I'm Bill Haas. In uh, probably the mid 2000s, uh, there were a lot of uh, releases by Fibrash, and they had uh, this amazing ability to compress, you know, full motion video and sound into 64 kilobytes, not megabytes or gigabytes, but kilobytes. Um, and this just enthralled me. I had to know how it was done and I had to uh, start programming it. Although not technically part of a BBS, the demo scene grew up alongside BBSs. The demo scene has been around since the early 1980s and still exists to this day. Demos are computer programs that show off the capabilities of the computer and also the programmer. The demo scene is a cyber culture that exists around these demos. Thousands of people across the world compete in what are known as parties. Sometimes the demos are made by individuals, however most are made by small teams of ace elite programmers. For example, one may do the artwork, one may do the programming, and another the music. Many of the demos that have been made really show off what is possible on that computer. The demo scene didn't start with the PC, it had its roots on the Amiga, the Atari ST, as well as the Commodore 64. Even platforms as esoteric as the BBC Micro and the ZX Spectrum were included in the demo scene at some point or another. The demo scene is alive and well in the second decade of the 21st century, and despite COVID-19, members of demo scene crews across the world held remote parties to cover submissions of the demo crews. These parties include Assembly, which is an international event hosted in Finland since 1992. The venues for these events top over 5,000 visitors in sports arenas. There's also Chaos Constructions in Russia, the Gathering in Norway and Revision in Germany, to name but a few of the other bigger parties. Like ANSI art teams, BBSs were popping up all over the place specifically for the demo scene. Some were official BBSs of a particular demo crew, and some were distributors of zip files that contained demos. The demo scene was so intertwined with BBSs, the two are still seen as close allies, with demos still being launched or distributed. On BBS's today. The amazing thing about my experience, uh, very quickly we determined that even though we got on board in order to obtain uh, unpaid access to commercial software by, by making art, a really weird kind of economic transaction when you stop to think about it, um, teenage boys making art in order to trade each other for stolen software. The the wares, the, the pirated goodies, they weren't as interesting. The, the art was interesting, even though criminal computer underground activities were very much a motivating factor uh, getting the scene kicked off. Very quickly, it was backgrounded. You know, cracking games is fun, making crack trolls is fun, uh, but what's more fun than playing a stolen game? seeing your crack troll on a giant screen at an arena with a thousand nerds screaming your crew's name because you have shown them something they didn't know was possible to do on a Commodore 64. That's, that's cool. That's the, that's the real thrill. 